Hello class, welcome to this course, Auditing and Assurance Principles. This is part of the auditing subject in the licensure examination for CPAs here in the Philippines. My name is Rian Cesar Pisaliman and I will handle the discussion under this course. Our first topic for today is ASR01, Introduction to Assurance Services and Other Services of the CPA. Here's the outline of the topics that we will discuss under this course. So the first three topics will discuss the framework for auditing and assurance services. So the first topic, we have the introduction to assurance and other services of CPAs, followed by introduction to auditing. And finally, introduction to the risk-based audit process, including the objectives and responsibilities related to performance of audit function. And then from topic four onward, we will cover the audit process, starting with the preliminary engagement activities, followed by planning and audit of financial statements, the study and evaluation of internal controls, substantive audit procedures, and then still part of the audit process, we have topic 8 until topic 10, audit sampling and other means of testing, completing the audit, and issuing the audit report, forming an opinion and issuing the audit report. Then finally, the last part of this course will cover the legal and other regulatory requirements related to our practice of profession. So we have topic 11, professional and legal responsibilities. Topic 12, code of ethics for professional accountants in the Philippines and quality controls. And last, we have attestation and other services of CPAs. In this video lecture, we will cover the first topic, Introduction to Assurance and Other Services of CPAs. So also, the, the video lecture on this topic may also be divided into different parts to maintain an adequate length for each video lecture. The references for this topic include the first one, the Philippine Framework for Assurance Engagements, and another one, we have the Philippine Standards on Assurance Engagements. So the difference between the two is that the first one, the Philippine Framework for Assurance Engagement or simply the framework, contain the definition, the nature and objectives, and even limitations of an assurance engagement. Whereas the standard or the Philippine Standard on Assurance Engagement, also known as PSAE, will contain the basic principles and essential procedures on performing the assurance engagements. In this video lecture, we will cover the following items. So the first one, we have the services of a practitioner. So meaning to say, once uh, you become CPAs in the future, so what are the range of services that you can offer to the public as a practitioner or as a CPA or certified public accountant? And then second one, we will also cover the fundamentals of assurance engagement. Under this item, we will discuss the definition of uh, assurance engagements, so including the nature and objectives of assurance engagement. We will, also the we will also discuss the demand for assurance services and finally the essential elements of an assurance engagement. So what makes an engagement of a CPA an assurance engagement? And then next, we will also cover the classification of assurance engagements. Assurance engagement can be classified as to level of assurance provided by the CPA and also as to structure. So finally, we will also cover the limitation of assurance services under this item. And the last one, we will also touch topics related to non-assurance services. Although we will have a separate video lecture covering in detail, so the other services of CPAs. Because in this video lecture, we will cover or we will focus rather on the assurance services of the CPAs. So let's go to our first topic. So our first topic is about the services of a practitioner the universe of the services 
that a CPA can offer to the public. Take note that there are four sectors or areas of practice of a CPA. So number one, we have the public accounting. Second, commerce and industry. Third, education or academe. And the last one, practice in government. So in this course, auditing and assurance principles, so we assume or we are under the premise that a CPA will practice under the public accounting sector. So a CPA uh, engaged in the practice of public accounting or public practice offers his or her services as a CPA to his or her clients in exchange for a fee. So for example, you will offer auditing and accounting services to your client, consulting services to your client in exchange for professional fees. So that is the nature of the services or the nature of practice in public accounting. So now, the services of a practitioner or CPA practitioner under public accounting falls under two broad or fall under two broad categories. So we have assurance services and non-assurance services. Now assurance services or assurance engagements are defined by our framework, the Philippine framework for assurance engagements. And those that will not fall under the definition by residual implication will be considered non-assurance services or non-assurance engagements. So example of assurance engagement include audit and review of financial statements and other assurance services. So usually these are assurance services whose subject matter are other than the contents of the financial statements. And then we also have non-assurance engagements. So again, those services of a public practitioner which do not fall under the definition of assurance services are considered non-assurance services. So examples of non-assurance services include agreed upon procedures, compilation services. So example of that is preparation of financial statements. We have management consulting or management advisory services. And finally, we have other tax services. So for an, for an engagement no, to be qualified as an assurance engagement, as we have mentioned, it must meet the definition set forth no, by our framework or the Philippine framework for assurance engagement. And it must contain also all the elements of an assurance engagement. So those definition and elements we will discuss in the succeeding section of this lecture.